guys, Jessica here, the Fright Family Coach. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are talking about service dogs, working dogs, therapy dogs, and emotional support animals. Actually, all animals. Mostly dogs, because that's what most people use in this category of animals. But yeah, what is the difference? Service, working, therapy, and emotional support. What is the difference? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Well, hey there, guys. My name is Jessica. If you're new to my channel, I am the Furry Family Coach. And in this on this channel, we talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, canine enrichment, canine nutrition, um, feline nutrition, <laughs> feline enrichment, sometimes feline behavior. All of that wonderful stuff because I'm a pet parent coach and I care very deeply about my pets and your pets. And because you're here, I know you do too. So let's get right into today's video and make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not already subscribed to my channel. If that subscribe button is red, you need to click it and turn it gray, then click the bell and select all notifications. So what is the difference in a service dog, a working dog, a therapy dog, and an emotional support dog or animal in any of these categories, but mostly we're talking about dogs. What is the difference? Let's start with service animals, service dogs. So service dogs, according to the ADA or Americans with Disabilities Association, this is the definition of a service dog. <clears throat> service dogs are individually trained to perform specific tasks and to work with people with disabilities. According to the ADA, disabilities can be physical, sensory, psychiatric, intellectual, or other mental disabilities. The work of the service dog must be directly related to the handler's disability. These are just some of the things service dogs can do. So a service dog could be a guide dog to help blind people navigate the world. Hearing or signal dogs, they're sometimes called. Alert deaf people to sounds such as a knock on the door or maybe another person entering the room. Psychiatric dogs are trained to detect and oftentimes lessen the effects of a psychiatric event. Service dogs also help people who are wheelchair bound or otherwise physically limited. They may open doors or cabinets or fetch things for their handler or owner. Sometimes they'll even carry items. Um, there are also autism service dogs who help people on the spectrum uh, with autism, help them understand sensory signals around them. They can also alert their autistic owners to uh, overstimulation. There are also service dogs who are trained to detect seizures in their owners or handlers and so depending on how they're trained sometimes they will stand over their owner if they're having a seizure or they, they may be trained to go get help. So according to the ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act, service dogs have full public access so there are no there are no limitations. Anywhere a person can go their service dog can go. However, airlines have their own rules for service animals. So if you are flying, you do want to check with the airline prior, like well in advance, probably even, be I mean, for me, even before you buy your ticket. Okay, so a working dog is different. It's different from a service dog, from a therapy dog, from an ESA. So a working dog is a dog who is trained for a like one specific purpose. This could be detection, it could be herding, hunting, search and rescue. Uh, police dogs and military dogs are all examples of working dogs. Some dogs are trained to detect explosive devices, some dogs may be trained to detect cancer. So often with working dogs we see that their primary role is in some way using their excellent sense of smell because us as humans, we really fall short, um, especially compared to this ab the ability of smell that our dogs have. So the third type is a therapy dog. So therapy dogs are very different from any other type of dog that we're talking about in this video today. Therapy dogs generally with their in conjunction with their owner or handler they actually will volunteer in settings such as libraries hospitals airports schools and nursing homes and, and other places of the sort they volunteer along with their handler and generally provide comfort and affection and love of course in their work so a therapy dog is trained specifically to be comfortable in all sorts of various different environments and around all sorts of various different people. 
So a, a therapy dog specifically will have a very, very calm temperament. Therapy dogs are different from service dogs and under the ADA, they actually do not have all of the same rights as a service dog does. In fact, they are not uniformly covered or protected under any rights. So they're basically treated as any other dog that is not a service dog. With the exception that a certified therapy dog will be allowed into those places where they volunteer or work, such as libraries, hospitals, nursing homes, where a pet dog may not actually be able to go, but they generally are certified for that place that they can go. So if you're certified to go to one hospital, it doesn't mean you can go to all hospitals. It would just be that hospital or hospital group. Now, ESAs, which is our final group today, or emotional support animals, they are very different and have their own set of rights, very different to every other, every other group that we have talked about in today's video so far. An emotional support animal really doesn't undergo any special training. They really do provide comfort just for the person who has the prescription from a qualified and licensed therapist to give them um, what legal protection they do have for that one person. They do not have the same rights as service animals under the ADA. In fact, I don't believe they have any service animal rights as the service, service animals do with the Americans with Disabilities Act. ESAs may be trained for the specific owner that they have, but they may not be trained at all. Now that's not to say that ESAs don't provide a valuable service for their owners, they absolutely do. It's just that the training process and the qualification process for the dogs is very different, so they're not necessarily, they're not protected under the ADA. So ESAs have very limited rights and you actually, depending on what the prescription is from the therapist um, for the ESA, it could you could have housing rights or uh, flight, uh, pl flying in plane rights, <laughs> air traffic rights. Now, again, with air traffic rights, you do want to check with individual airlines before buying your tickets because they all have their own set of rules for ESAs as well as they have their own set of rules for service animals. In fact, uh, as of January 2021, Airlines are not required at all to accommodate emotional support animals, so you definitely want to check with the airline before buying a ticket. So basically you're looking at housing rights for ESAs, but you know, ESAs have have their place. If you are, if you have a mental disorder or you know, depression, anxiety, your therapist may prescribe an ESA to you. And ESAs are amazing in what they do as well. So those, that is the difference between those four groups of animals. I hope this video helps to clarify things a little bit for you. If you do have any questions about it, make sure to comment down below and let me know. Also, I hope you give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. If it's red, you need to click it and turn it gray. Once it turns gray, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications, and that way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, make sure you check the link in the description to my Patreon. You know, Patreon is not for everybody, but I do hope it's for you because if you are one of those 2.0 pet parents, I know you're gonna get great value from becoming a patron over on Patreon. Thank you so much for joining me today here on YouTube. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.